Hey, what's going on guys? Zephyr here. Welcome back to Scoreboards uh, All About It Part 2. <laughs> Sorry about the um there. Um, in today's video, I'm just going to be expanding on how I was uh, teaching you guys about scoreboards in the first episode. So this one's going to be a little bit more complex. This one's just showing you a little bit more about how to use it for the player portion of the scoreboards. Today we're going to be uh, just showing how to do the set command test reset random and at the end we'll do operation operation will be a little bit longer but that one is very important so yeah so let's go ahead and start with it I just want to review with you guys if you do scoreboard players add and then either your names different person's name whatever you want to do and then we'll do this so every time that you do add it's just like normal if you add the same amount just gonna keep on going up or it's just gonna be adding by that amount so if I add 10 yeah it's just gonna go up by that amount that you're adding so for the first one we got set so if we do scoreboard players set and then you do the players name then the name of the scoreboard now if I do set 0 no matter how many times I do this this is just gonna keep on setting it to whatever you want it to be so if I do set 100 it's just going to set it right to that score that you're adding right there. So if I do back down to 50, no matter what I do, ooh, no letters, no letters. I do that, it's going to set it up to that. Uh, just keep in mind when you are doing commands, the max is like 2.1 and change billion um, score. So if we do, if we do 2, 2, 0, 0, so that's 2,000 million billion. See that is an invalid number because that number is too big. Now if we change this down to 1, that one is a valid number, but there is some uh, not very much space after it. Uh, so make sure your scores aren't going above that when you are adding, setting, whatever you're doing. Make sure your scores don't go above that. Um, and like I said in the last video, I do apologize. I do have a, spe a specific resource pack. That makes the scoreboard show up on the left rather than the right side of the screen um, but yeah so we'll move on from that uh, we're actually going to go to reset next so if i just do scoreboard players reset and then at s and then the name of the scoreboard uh, then you just hit enter so that removes the player or just resets the scoreboard um, so that's how you completely remove a player I think of the last video I was saying that was a little bit more complicated, but I was wrong. My bad. Um, so that just removes the player from the scoreboard altogether. So if you don't want them on the scoreboard, you can just do that. Um, just to add them back, you could just do scoreboard players add and then however, or their name, sorry, display, and then however many you want to add them to it. And then you could just do reset and it'll remove that player from the scoreboard. Um, and then we're just going to go to random real quick. We'll come back to test in a minute. Uh, but we're going to want to do scoreboard players random. And then the player's name display. And then I think you might be able to just, no, you do need to add the numbers after it. So this is where you add the minimum that the numbers are going to be going between. So you could have a random number between negative 2.1 billion all the way up to positive 2.1 billion um, so we're, we're just going to do a random number between 1 and 100 so that's your minimum and then your maximum hit enter got a random number of 37 if I hit that again 7 44 51 39 17 74 so on so that's how you do a random number if you're trying to do a random system for whatever that does come in handy um, for a randomized system um, like for for an example I made a roulette table on someone's world for them and that roulette table uses a random number between I believe 1 and 16 to give them uh, a set line to create or to give them a random chance at winning a different the prize from the roulette table just by using a random 1 through 16 chooses that number and then it spins the wheel and lands on that specific number 
Um, so that's what I've used it for. Otherwise, you can use it for, like over here, I've got, uh, what's this called? The uh, crates. You can do that for crates. Um, that's the entity version. I have a non-entity version also where you can use that. Uh, yeah, so that's how the random number works. Just gives you a random number between a minimum number that you do and a maximum number. And you could do a oh, bigger number than this if you want. You could do 2,000. You could set this to 50. So it'll just do a random number in between those, as you can see on the left there. And yeah, so that's how the random works. Uh, and then we'll come back to test real quick. I'll actually do this in a command block. Do that. So we'll do scoreboard players test, and then I'll do my name display. And then this is where you want to test if they have um, minimum number. Like if you're doing a shop, you want to do let's say an item costs ten thousand dollars. So since I have 1085, it will not activate. I'll just get a redstone block real quick. So previous output is on. And it says score 1085, as you can see, which I have on the left there, is not in range of 10,000 up to the max number, which this is the max number, if you guys were wondering. Um, if I were to do, let's say, 1,000, and I were to do that again, Score 1,085 is in range of 1,000 to the max number. Um, if you want to do a little bit more in depth, you can do. You can actually add another number after this. So let's just say 10,000 or 10,000. There we go. So that when I activate that again, score 1,085 is in range of 1,000 to 10,000. So like here, I'll pull up the uh, the full command here. So scoreboard players test the name of the players, the scoreboard, the minimum number that you want to test them for, and the maximum. Like for example, I've noticed on on some worlds you might be a low enough rank to go into a certain area um, and once you become a higher rank, let's say 1 through 10, you can go to this specific area. But as soon as you pass uh, rank 10, um, if you're like 11 or higher, then you won't be able to go to that previous area. That's where the max wild card comes in handy. It just allows you to um, do a specific range for certain things. Um, yeah, so that's how you do the test command. And now we're going to move on to the little bit more complicated one, which is the scoreboard players operation. And then, you know, set this back actually. And then we're going to do, yeah, so we'll start with scoreboard, players, operation, and then you're going to want to do player's name or the, like I'm doing at S, we'll do display, and then you got all these different things you can do here. So we got the percent equals, times equals, plus equals, minus equals, divided by equals, less than, equal to, greater than, and then this bottom one is actually a swap. So let me just do, add a random player to the scoreboard, scoreboard players, add, and then we'll just name them dummy to the display scoreboard, and we'll just set them to 500. So now, as you can see on the left there, we got a, a quote-unquote dummy player at 500. So if we do scoreboard players operation, and then what you want to do here is it depends on who you want to go first. When you do this command, you're going to do a player, the uh, scoreboard that they're using, and then you're going to use one of those plus, equals, minus, divide, any of those things. And then you're going to do the next player and then the next scoreboard. So if I do, let's do me, let's do at s display, and then we'll do, we'll do plus plus equals to dummy, which is the name of the other player. And we're also going to do in the display scoreboard. So this is this is the main part here is you do the scoreboard player's operation, player name, the name of their scoreboard, and then whatever you're doing here, like I'm adding, I'm adding here. So then you would do that, and then you'll do the second player's name, which you can also 
do the same person. I'm just doing a second person just to show and then their scoreboard. So what this does is whenever you're using this portion here, whatever this piece is here, it's going to like for mine, it's adding. So what it's going to do is it's going to add our two scores together and then it's going to save it in my scoreboard. So I'm at like 1085 and they're at 500. So mine is going to add those together, which will be 1585 and it's going to save it in my score because I'm coming first. See, I'm 1585. If I do that again, I'm just going to go up 500 each time. And that's how that part works. That's how the plus equals works. Now we're just going to do the minus equals, which is pretty much the same thing. Dummy display. Now it's subtracting 500 and saving it in mine because my player is coming first. I'm just going to save it in there. And yeah, so then now I'm down to 85. And I can go negative. I'm not going to, though. Um, and then we'll move on to the times equals and let's do so let's do scoreboard players set me display to 10 we'll do scoreboard players set dummy display to 5 okay so we'll do go back here scoreboard players operation at s display and we'll do the star equals dummy display so what this should do just it should times this together so their five times my ten and save it as 50 in my score yep and if we do times five again times five again times five again and so on uh, that's how the the star works that's just the times symbol um, I'm pretty sure divide or the slash equals is divide for that so we'll do dummy display so it's dividing by five each time you do it that's what this one is and then what we got is we did the plus minus times divided by and then so what the percent is is here let me get an odd number for me so let's do scoreboard players set alpha to let's say display 52 okay so if you can tell when you do this command, if you do 5 divided by 50, you would get 10, right? You would get 50, div or sorry, 50 divided by 5 is 10. And then if you were to do 52 divided by 5, you would get 10 and like a decimal. So what this allows you to do is if you do scoreboard players operation at S display, and we do the percent sign equals to dummy display what this does is it would take that 52 divided by 5 it would take the 5 out of the 50 as many times as it can and whatever number is remaining over it would save it in mine so like 52 divided by 5 um, it would take out the 50 because the 5 can go into 50 perfectly and then it would just leave me with 2 as you can see so like if we set me to um, set me to Let's do, uh, what am I doing? Let's do 13. So 5 can go into 13 two times because it do 5 plus 5 is 10. And then there would be a 3 left over. So if I were to do this again, I would just have a remainder of 3. That's what the percent is. It's the remainder of what's left over. And you can do these with different numbers. I'm just showing you with an easier numbers sake. Um, how to do that now if I were to swap it actually scoreboard players operation if I were to do dummy first dummy display and then we would do percent equals and then me display what it would do is it would take my number get the remainder of five so it'd be three could go into five one times and then there'd be a two remainder and it would save it into the dummy so then they would be at 2 because they were at 5. It took out 3 from 5, and then there was a remainder of 2 because 3 couldn't go into it any more times. So that's how the remainder works. Scoreboard, players, operation. And then we'll do me again, display. And then this one is a little bit different. So if I, so the less than um, is where... If my number 
is like the first person's number is higher than the second person's number, then it will set my number down to their number or down to their score. So if I do scoreboard players set dummy display, we'll just set them to a hundred and we'll do scoreboard players set me to 105. We'll just do that. So if I do scoreboard players operation at s display less than and then we do dummy display it'll set me equal to them but if I go back and change me to let's say 60 and I run this command nothing's gonna happen because I am lower than the person that I'm trying to go for because I'm saving my number in the first or because the number is being saved in the first person of this command it's nothing's gonna happen uh, because this number is less than this number so if this number is greater than or if the first person's number is greater than the second person's number then it will set them equal to the second person right if they're lower than the second person then nothing's gonna happen kind of the same thing with the the greater than symbol instead of the less than symbol if my number is lower than them it will just set me equal to them so if I go set me to 1000 I do this nothing's gonna happen because I'm greater than that number um, but if I were to set me back down to 1 and run this command it would set me equal to them because I'm lower than their number I don't really know how that makes sense but that's just how it works the greater than symbol, let me pull that back up. The greater than symbol is if your number, if the first person's number is lower than the second person's number, it's going to set them equal to the second person. If it's, if you have the other symbol where it's instead of the greater than symbol, if it's the less than symbol, it's going to, if your great, if your number is greater than the second person, then it's going to set you equal to them. Or if you're lower than the second person, nothing's going to happen. That's, uh, I don't know how that works, but <laughs> that's just how it is. Um, so if I set me to, like, let's say 500. This is where the last one's going to come into play. So if I do scoreboard player, or scoreboard players operation, at s display, and then we do the greater than, or less than, and then we do the other player, um, uh, scoreboard or display what it's going to do is it's going to swap our numbers so they're at 500 now I'm at 100 if I do that again then I'm at 500 and they're at 100 now they're at 500 I'm at 100 this just allows you to swap the players numbers without having a three chain like what you could do in commands is what you could do is have a, a third person like I don't know what you would exactly need this for but if you have this person's score, let's say they they have one, they have two, and they have three, but you wanted their number to be uh, over here or whatever, you could just um, swap, like their number would become the second person's number, this person's original number would become their number, and their original number would become their number, and then you just do it again, so that move across the line um, without actually losing their score, because if you were to try and swap them, just a two-person system, their number would become their number and then they'd have the same numbers and you won't be able to swap because their original number was deleted in the sequence if that makes sense um, yeah so that's all of it for this video uh, I do apologize if anything was confusing feel free to join my discord that will be in the description ask questions if you have any I will respond as soon as I can uh, yeah so this has been Zephyr uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Please <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out.